Okay, we're going to get started in 5.2. Before we get started on problems, I want to go through the different exponent rules that we're going to encounter. Okay, I have them all written on the board already. The first exponent rule and the second exponent rule were actually introduced in 5.1 that we did on Thursday. And it's the first one is talking about the product rule. If you are multiplying the same bases, for instance, these are the bases, right? These X's are the base. These numbers are your exponents. If you are multiplying the same bases together, you simplify that by adding their exponents. So X to the second times X to the fifth is the same thing as x to the two plus, you just add the exponents together to get x to the seventh. So that's the product rule. The power rule shows if you're raising the base to more than one exponent, right? So I'm raising this x to two different exponents, the three and the four. If that is the case, you're going to multiply their exponents to simplify it. The quotient rule, which is kind of the opposite of the product rule, since addition, since multiplying and dividing are opposite operations. The quotient rule says if you are dividing the same bases, like an x over an x, you're going to subtract their exponents to simplify it. Okay? And the reason you want to be able to do this is because it's easier or more simplified to see x to the seventh than it is to see x squared times x to the fifth. When these two things equal the same thing, that's why you want to be able to simplify it. Again, it's, it's simplified to just see x to the twelfth instead of seeing x to the third and the fourth. Same with quotient. Wouldn't you rather just see an x to the fifth instead of x to the seventh over x squared? Yeah, of course. This is much more simplified in your thinking. So that's why we have these exponent rules. We want to make our life simpler. Now, this last exponent rule is talking about raising to the zero power. So before I get to these different examples, I have to raising something to the zero oh, power. Uh -oh. Let's talk about where this zero power comes from. Let's go back to this quotient rule. So let's say We have x to the seventh over x to the seventh. What is that equal to? Anytime, it doesn't matter. If you have the same thing on the top and the bottom of a fraction, it is always equal to one, correct? Anything, if it, you have five over five, that's one. x over x, that's one. Negative 14 over negative 14. That's one. Anything, if you have a fraction and it's the same on the top and the bottom, it's equal to one. So I know that x to the seventh over x to the seventh is equal to one. Let's use that quotient rule to prove that. What does the quotient rule say I do with these exponents? If I'm dividing the same bases, which I'm doing, I subtract their exponents. So here I'd have seven minus seven, which gives me what? X to the zero. And what do we say about X to anything to the right to the zero power is equal to one because of this, because of that quotient rule. You subtract those exponents, okay? And I wanna explain it like this because a lot of times people will look at something as if it's raised to the zero power, they will assume that answer is zero and it's not zero, it's equal to one. 
So let's go through these different examples of different things raised to the zero power and see why the answers are what they are. All right, just a plain old x to the zero power. We said anything raised to the zero power is equal to one. What about this? Negative x to the, look at the difference between these two. This answer is negative one. This answer is positive one. These parentheses make a difference. On this problem, negative x to the zero power without any parentheses, the only thing being raised to that zero power is the x, not the negative. If they wanted the negative to be raised to the zero power, they would have put parentheses around it to include it, like this one. So this negative essentially just comes over. And then x to the zero is one. So that's why x turns to negative one. Here, if I do include, if everything is in parentheses here to the zero power, that if everything's included, if it's to the zero power, it is one. What about this one? What is being raised to the zero power here? There's no parentheses, which means the zero only goes with what it's directly over, which is the X. This three is not being included. So this really says the three comes over this part turns to one, right? Because it's to the zero power. That's why that answer is just three. What's being raised to the zero power here? Just the X. If it wanted to include this negative three and what was being raised to the zero power, it put parentheses around it like this one. But since there is no parentheses, the only thing being raised to the zero power is this X. The negative three essentially just comes over. This is the part that turns to one. So now I'm left with the negative three that came over and the one, which this, that's why that answer is negative three. But this one, at, I don't know anything. So if I have everything in being raised to that zero power anytime all of it's in parentheses to the zero power it's always one which was where we're going to start off with today different situations where we are raising things to the zero power so there's the zero power rule there's the other exponent rules that we're going to talk about. So if you want to, if you want to pause me, go ahead and pause me and write that down. This is what you're going to have to come back to throughout this assignment. You just want to take a picture? Hello. Good morning. You want to take a picture that time? I did. I think, hold on, let me look. Yeah, I got it. Look at Billy, you got that special. You got your little clothes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gee, I should have took my test like as I did the review. Why did you, you did it before you did the review? No. Huh? You took your test and then you did the review? No, I did the review here. Oh. Remember? You should have taken your test right after. Yeah, I should have. All right, well, we'll look at it after, after I get done with the lecture. We'll look at it. I don't want to get off subject. I just want to say Air Pods on Amazon is 114. I just want to say that. Air Pods on Amazon are 114 today. I guess it's Amazon Prime Day. Yeah. I can't do it. I don't like stuff in my in my ears. Well, I I like the re the original one because the problem's got the plastic and all. Okay, getting into the homework type of problems. Number one says this, one minus three to the zero power. So what is being raised to the zero?
zero power, this three. Anything, what is it if you raise something to the zero power? It is equal to one, which means this says one minus three to the zero, which is one. Wait, say that one more time. Anything, if you are raising something to the zero power it is equal to one. You need that when we go through all this, actually this very next problem is pretty much all this. Okay. It's going to go through all that very all that stuff. So one minus one leaves you with what? Zero. Zero. So 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 when it's like this, so say like for instance, one minus two to the zero power is going to be two minus two. No, it'll be one minus one or two minus. What did you say? Two minus two. What what was the problem? Okay, so one minus. Two to the zero power is still zero. It's still zero. Because two to the zero, anything to the zero power, this really still says one minus one. Oh. Okay. This next one goes through all this. This next one has one, two, three, four, five, six, six different problems in it. Actually, golly, it's almost exactly like the one over here. But no, like the one over here. X to the zero, negative X to the zero, three X to the zero, in parentheses, three X to the zero, Oh, you just wrote there, right? So we'll just talk about it again. One, negative one, one. <laughs> well, what is this one? If you are the only thing there and you're raised to the zero power. Zero. One. one. No, not zero. One. Oh, one. Okay, then it's going to be negative one. Right, because here, why is this negative one? Because, because the negative. only thing being raised to the zero power is this X. If it wanted that negative included, it would have put it in parentheses. So this negative is just coming over. X to the zero is one. Is it still one in front of zero? If there is, it still what? Is it still one in front of zero? I mean, the X is already one. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So on this one. No parentheses around anything. So what is being raised to the zero power? So, Just the X, only the X. So that's the part that turns into one. The three doesn't though, because the three is not included. So essentially this three comes over, X to the zero turns to one, three times one. Is this like the homework 5.1, This is 5.2. Yeah, this is, this is a little bit. I did it, I did it. I, I moved 5.2 to this week, so it wouldn't do Sunday. So you can still do it. That was 5.1. I can help you with that today, too. It's, it's a lot of new stuff. Yeah, it was different for me. <laughs> it was something totally different from what we were doing. So I kind of got a lot of um, ways. All right, what is being raised to the zero power here? So in parentheses, which means the three and the X are being raised to the zero power. If there's parentheses around it with a zero, the answer is always one. Because all this is being raised to the zero power. What's being raised to the zero power on this one? Just the X. If they wanted that negative three included with what's being raised to the zero power, it would have thrown some parentheses around it. So the only thing that is being raised to the X power is, I mean, to the, X, to the zero power is this X, which means what does this three do, negative three do? It comes over, X to the zero turns to one, negative three times one is negative three. And this last one, what is being raised to the zero power here? All of it. Yeah, the whole negative three x. What is it if all of it? Because it's in parentheses. What if it? What is it if 
all of it's being raised to the zero. So if all of it's being raised to the zero, it's one. Okay, number three. That was all number two. We're gonna have a several different problems included in it. Well, can they have made this any more complicated? No. <laughs> Jesus. I don't know. It's got a. All right, number three. Determine whether the expression is equal to zero, one, or negative one. We've got zero to the ninth power over 13 to the zero power. So let's do the top and the bottom separately. What does zero to the ninth power mean? What do you do with this? You multiply it together nine times, right? But what do you get if you multiply zero together nine times? Still zero. So this turns to zero. What is 13 to the zero power? One. Right, the whole, this 13, it's only one number. See, so like over there on number four where it says eight to zero equals one. Right, so this just, is like, just say for this, this 13. So 13 to zero prime is gonna be one. So what is zero over one? Zero. zero. Ooh, when you when you did your video, I I like literally marked it while you was teaching. That's what you're supposed to do when I do my homework. <laughs> and pause it and stuff. No, I, you didn't pause it. Mm -hmm. Okay, number four. It's kind of crazy to me that they throw this problem in here right now without any other negative exponent. This belongs in a section all by itself. Let's talk about negative exponents first, okay? When you are have something raised to a negative exponent, you first need to turn your exponent positive. And the way that you do that is turn your X upside down or flip your base. And I'll show you why here in just a minute. So I think I need, to th I need to think of it as x over one so that I have the ability to flip it. So if I turn this base upside down, I have one over x to the first power, which is just one over x. So just like, let me explain the quotient rule again, because it'll help, it'll help further explain this. What does the quotient rule say? Remember, I'm going to do three different things. I have x to the seventh over, oops, x to the fifth, x to the seventh over x to the seventh, and x to the fifth over x to the seventh. Okay, we're we'll waiting. <laughs> No, I'm not on that. So just I'm not I'm explaining. So you'll have the knowledge to be able to do your work. If I just tried to work each one of those problems individually, there's different things on each of them, but this will explain all of them. So this right here, what does x to the seventh mean? X times x times x seven times. I'm gonna write that out. X to the seventh means. Right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's x to the seventh power. Mm -hmm. X to the fifth means five eighths. Right? There's x to the fifth. Remember when you have the same factor in the top and the bottom, you can cancel them. Right? So this x, you cancel that one. This X, we'll cancel that one. Mm -hmm. 
all of them cancel except for except for two. what? Those two. So what is left up there? X times X, which is what? X squared. All right to the second power. So that's the answer. Yeah. So x times x will be left me leave me with x squared, right? Mm -hmm. That's what's left over after you did all that canceling. What did the quotient rule, right when you got here, when all those rules were on the board, what did the quotient rule say to do with ooh, x to the seventh over x to the fifth? What does the quotient rule say to do with those exponents? That's the trait. It's because of that reason. That's it all the way written out, doing the canceling. The shortcut is I can just subtract my exponents. What happens here? Why is it zero? Why is that zero? Well, I'm going to get zero when I subtract my exponents. Remember what the, this is going to explain the zero power rule. So, and what happens here? into when we say cancel. Mm -hmm. So this really so what am I left with? A bunch of ones on top and a bunch of ones on bottom. There's one. Look at your beginning problem. If you have anything over itself, what is it always equal to? Right? If you have five over five, what's that equal to? One. One. 10,000 over 10,000? 10, One. One. Negative 14 over negative 14? One. X to the seventh over X to the seventh? One. Use your quotient rule. What would the quotient rule have said to do with those exponents? Nine. Subtract them. What if I do that? Nine. X to the seven minus seven? which is x to the zero power. And what is anything to the zero power? One. And that's number four rule. Oh. Anything to the zero power. It's because of that quotient rule. You subtract the exponents, you get x to the zero, which is equal to one. So now I'm going to use it to explain this negative exponent rule. What does x to the fifth mean? X, right? I is the and then it's a minus. And then you're going to do seven x. Uh -huh. You're going to cancel those. And then you should leave. Okay, so x to the fifth up top, x to the seventh at the bottom. Cancel, 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 cancel. What is left? Where is it though? It's in the bottom. You can't just put x squared. It's not x squared. This is where your x squared is. It's in the bottom. What do you think is up top? What happens? What are these all turning into? So if, I, if these are all ones, what's left up top? Just this explains the negative exponent rule because what would I have done with x to the fifth over x to the seventh using the quotient rule? What would that have told me to do? X to the what? Five minus seven. Five minus seven. Five minus seven. Which is x. What do you get if you subtract five minus seven? Not two. Negative two. What did I say 
How do you fix a negative exponent? You flip the base. Well, if I don't say, I don't, so right here, what do I need to put? Think of this X as being over. So if I flip it, what does it become? Which turns the exponent to? Negative. Well, positive. One over X squared, one over X squared. It's because of that reason. X to the fifth means X five times. X to the seventh means X seven times. Go through, do your five cancels. Can you do one more? Hang on, just pay attention to this one. Okay. So here, the XX mm -hmm. leaves me with X squared. But remember, I can't just put it in the top. It's not in the top. It's in the bottom. So what's left up top? One. The X squared is in the bottom. I can also, I'm just showing this a different way over here. It's the same problem. It's still X to the fifth over X to the seventh. I'm using the quotient rule instead of, because what if it was X to the 55th over X to the 77th? You don't want to do all that, right? You don't want to write X out 55 times, X out 77 times. There has to be a simpler way. There is. It's the quotient rule that says instead of writing this all the way out every time, simply do your top exponent minus your bottom exponent, get your answer. If it's negative, like this one is, flip your base, put the X in the bottom. Let's do another one. Because this is, this is something that we're going to be seeing. Oh yeah, this is something totally new, right? I don't think I got this. This is something you see every day. Handsome or large, almost. <laughs> but we know the shortcut rule now. I don't need to go through and write out X 17 times and X 25 times. What does the quotient rule tell me to do? If these are the same bases, so it's going to be 17 minus 25. 17 minus 25. Put that in your calculator to get X to the what? Negative 8 pounds. We're just going to flip, right? If it's negative, it's going to flip. So what does that make it? It's going to be. One, one over x to the to the eighth power. Okay, okay, now I get it. So when you flip it, automatically go to a positive eight. That's right. When you, if something has a negative exponent, let's talk about this. Yeah, when you flip it, it turns the exponent positive. You see something like this. You don't ever want to see a negative exponent in an answer. The P is fine, right? Its exponent's positive. It's fine where it is. Who has a negative exponent? The Q. I need to only flip the Q. In other words, I just need to put the Q in the bottom of the fraction. So the P is fine. It'll stay fine where it is. P to the fifth. Q is not fine. It needs to come to the bottom of the fraction to make its exponent positive. Here's a trick. Does the X have a negative exponent? Where does it need to go then? To the bottom. Does the Y have a negative exponent? Where does it need to go? To the bottom. It is in the bottom. 
it needs to go to the top. To flip it would put it back up top. The wherever you are in your, in your fraction, you're either in the top or the bottom, right? There's only two spots of a fraction, top and bottom. Mm -hmm. If where you are gives you a negative exponent, you're essentially in the wrong side of the fraction. So X, to make its exponent positive, needs to flip to the bottom. Y, to make its exponent positive, needs to come to the top. So, this so is to make it positive. So if you are, where it doesn't matter where you are. If you have a negative exponent, you're in the wrong side of the fraction bar. All right, let's work through the rest of these. This section's hard. Five, the next section is not, is not near as bad. So, Ugh. here's the worst problem. I can't add those while they got negative exponents. So, how do I make this six have a positive exponent? Flip it. So what is it going to end up being? Which is just, right? So flip the seven also, right? So this really says, since these have first powers, you don't need to see those exponents. This really just says one six plus one seven. Remember this calculator that does what? Adds fractions for you? Mm -hmm. Sure it will. <laughs> if I want to add, what do I need to add? If I, I can't add those together right the way they're written because they don't have the same denominator. I have to get a common denominator and change their denominators, which changes their numerators. Or I need to figure out what 1 6 plus 1 7 is. Math enter enter. Yeah. So one over six. One over six. Use your parentheses. It's never a bad idea. One sixth in parentheses plus one seventh in parentheses gives you a weird decimal, but what do we know our calculator will do? Turn our decimals into fractions for us if we want it to by math, enter, enter. And what does it give you? 13 over 42. Use your calculator. All right, let's look at number six. It is. Well, it is hard. You just have to have practice, all practice. Are these the same bases that I'm dividing? Yeah. So if I'm dividing the same bases, that means I'm using the quotient rule, right? That's what you're doing. What does the quotient rule tell me to do with these exponents? Subtract them. So I have 5 to the 17th minus 13th, which is what? 5 to the 4th power. It tells me to type an integer or a simplified fraction. It doesn't want to see the exponent, which just means I need to do what? 5 times itself 4 times. You can either just punch that in, but what if this said 5 to the 27th power? You wouldn't want to hit 5 times itself 27 times. To do an exponent, just hit your base, which is 5. Now, see that button underneath the clear button that has the up arrow? That puts you up in your exponent. So once you have your cursor up in your exponent, type in whatever your exponent is, which in this case is 4 and hit enter. 
So 625. All right, that's what, if you did five four times, five times five is 25, times five again is 125, times five again is 625. But if you use that little up arrow on your calculator, that'll get you up in your exponent. All right, look at number six. Maybe I said six. <laughs> that was five. This is six. Here I have six to the fourth power over six to the fifth power. Still the quotient rule, right? I'm dividing the same basis. So what am I going to have? Six to the four minus five, which is six to the negative one, your x codes negative, so flip your six. What's that going to make it? One over six to the first power, which is just one over, what is six to the first? Just six. Use the quotient rule. So I have seven over S to the negative fourth. Don't make this any harder than it is. Anything wrong with this seven and where it is? No. What, does it have a negative X on it? No. No? So it's fine where it is. Yeah. Where does this S need to go? It needs to go to the top. It's got a negative X on it, which means it's in the wrong side of the fraction bar. Well, if I put the S on top, there's nothing left on bottom. Essentially, there's a one but if one is your denominator, you don't need to write that. 7s to the fourth over one is just 7s to the fourth. So all I had to do, once I moved that s to where it belonged, there wasn't anything else I needed to do to simplify that. Number eight. They're not the same basis, right? One's a five and one's a three. So I'm not doing the subtracting, the, right? It had to be the same number. Is the five where it's supposed to be? No. Why is it not where it's supposed to be? Because it's got a negative exponent, which means where does the five need to go? So I'll put the five squared in the bottom. It turn, if I moved it to the bottom, it turns this exponent positive. Is the three where it needs to be? It needs to go to the top, which makes this exponent positive three. Now, since those are numbers and not letters, I can carry this out. What does three to the third power mean? Three times three times three, or use the three, go up in your exponent to the third power, which is 27. What does five to the second power mean? Five times five, which is 25. And that doesn't reduce. So that's your answer. Now, whenever I I worked one similar to this in my explanation at the beginning. Is the P good? Yes. It's fine. It's got a positive exponent. What about the Q? Where does the Q need to go then? It's in the wrong side of the, of the fraction. It just needs to go to the bottom. So I'm going to have my P to the eighth is good. Q needs to go to the bottom to make it positive. 
Since those are letters and not numbers, I can't go any further, right? If those were numbers, like two to the eight, I would have to carry that out. All right, last one of this section. Is everybody in the right spot? First of all, you're looking for negative exponents. Yeah, everything's in the right spot. Everybody's in the right spot. But I still need to use that quotient rule because I do have the same bases here. I have eight over eight. So what can I do with the eight exponents? Subtract. Subtract them. So I have eight to the Nine, three, three minus five. Whoa, 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 wait. Oh. Top oh, exponent yeah. minus bottom exponent. Okay. Gotcha. Do the same thing with your X's. What am I going to do with the X's exponents? Uh, nine minus four. Nine minus four. So, like you said, what's going to be the exponent for the eight now? If I do three minus five, what's going to be the exponent for the X? Five. five. Who's in the wrong spot? Eight to the negative two. Eight's in the wrong spot. Eight needs to go to the bottom. bottom. So X to the fifth is good. I'll leave it where it is. Eight needs to go to the bottom. I can't do anything with an X because it's a letter, but I can do eight squared. So let's see, I still have oops, oh. x to the fifth is good. I can't do anything to do that exponent because it's a letter, but eight to the second power means eight times eight. All right, we are gonna start 5.4. We don't do 5.3, we do 5.1, 5.2, by four. I think you're gonna like five four better than this next one. I think you are catching on though at the that towards the end. Once you just I, and I you know I write out that explanation of why the negative exponent does what it does by using that quotient rule. Go ahead. I got a tiny bit on here. Wow. That's that one. It's like the number two that we did. Remember? Yeah, the one that was number two. This one. Oh, this gives them. Okay. So what is that? One. Well, wow. Tell me that's what I'm going to say. Oh, it's one, which is what? Number two. Oh, okay. Cool. Oh. She said I look at it, but we need I did. I thought that drop down was going to give you like zero, one, negative one. What is saying? Look at the letters on uh -huh. the side. Okay, okay. It threw me off a little bit. I'm like, nah, I'm getting on this too. Okay. We're going to talk about what are called polynomials. And polynomial is just a fancy word to say a group of terms. That's all it means is a group of terms. So if I have a group of terms, this is 5.4. Yes. The first thing, the first problems are going to ask you how many terms are listed here? Terms are separated by pluses and minuses. So the first term here is x to the third. That's one term. The second term is positive 7x squared. 
You go all the way up to the next sign. Negative 3x and positive 5. So how many terms are listed in that group? How many separate terms? There's four terms. The word coefficient The coefficient is the number part of the term, including its sign. It's not the letter part or the exponent part. Like the coefficient of 5x to the fifth is this 5. The coefficient of negative 6x squared is negative 6. It's the number in front of the term. So this first term, what's the number? For, and, and every term has a coefficient. And every term has a number part of it. I just don't see this one. What kind of x, what's the number in front of this x cubed? I just don't see it. One. So one would be the coefficient of this. What's the coefficient of this second term? Positive seven. What's the coefficient of this term? Negative three. What's the coefficient of this term? So the coefficient is just the number part of the term. Okay, so our number one says so for the following polynomial, which means polynomials just means a group of terms, give, determine the number of terms and give the coefficient of each term. So just like we did there, we're gonna determine how many terms there are and then we're gonna name the coefficient of each term, just like we did with that, what was just up there. Eight x to the fifth. Ooh. How many terms is that? One. It's just one. One term. What's the coefficient of that term? Uh, eight, eight. Oh, eight. Eight. Just eight. Coefficient is eight. The number part of it is eight. Number two. Thank you. 
Number three. Remember, every time you get to another sign, another plus or minus, that starts another term. So here's my first term. Here's my second term. You include the number, the letter, the exponent. As soon as you get to another sign, starts another term. So how many terms does this one have? Three terms. What's the coefficient of this first term? Eight. What's a nine? Not eight. Well, one. one. What's the coefficient of the second term? Negative nine. What's the coefficient of this last term? Positive three eight. So it's not eight, seven, five, point four. Like I'll mm -hmm. okay. It's oh, it's gonna say to separate your coefficients. So you do one, comma negative nine, comma okay. three eighths. Now, let's talk about, this will be our last thing. We'll finish this section on Thursday. Let's talk about what like curves mean. The ones we can do on the last chapter. We want to talk about like terms is because when we are adding and subtracting, you can only add or subtract like terms. A lot of times you'll hear people just call it combining like terms. Combining like terms is essentially a fancy way to say adding. So in order for terms to be able to add together, they have to have the same letter. You can't do 3x plus 4y. Those stay, those stay separate. You can't put those together. But you can put a 3x with a 4x because they are like terms. They have the same letter and each letter has the same exponent. Let's look at different examples. Looking at these two, there's two terms, right? Do they have the same letter? And do each of these letters have the same exponent? No. Exponent, not coefficient, exponent. That means I can add them together. They are like terms. When you put them together, if you have three X's and then you get four more X's, now you have seven X's. Those are like terms. Because I'm not, what, how do you get X squared? Not by adding X's, X times X is X squared. That's a good question because a lot of people try to do that. They say, well, that should be seven X squared, right? No, you only get X squared when you're multiplying X times X. Can I add the, are these like terms? Do they have the same letter? No. no then you can't add those together. That is just 3x plus 4y. So why can't be 3xy? Because how do you get xy? xy is x times y. That's how you get xy. I can multiply it. I could multiply that. 3x times 4y. 
I can do that. I just can't add them unless they're like terms. Do I have the same letters? Yeah. Do the letters have the same exponents? Yeah. Then they're like terms and I can add them together. My exponents are not gonna change. If you have three X squared and somebody else gives you four X squared, now you have seven X squared all together. Right, why don't I add those exponents? Because if you're adding exponents, what does that mean? That means you're multiplying. Right? Here's where you add exponents. X squared times X squared, right? That's that product rule. If you're multiplying the same bases, you add their exponents. I'm not multiplying anything here. I'm just putting things, combining like terms, which is adding. That's a fancy way to say adding is combining like terms. What if I have three X squared plus four X to the third? Are those like terms? Do they have the same letter? Yeah. But do those letters have the same exponent? No. Then they're not like terms and you can't put them together. That's just, that's as, that's as simplified as that can get. You can't add those two terms together. All right, so let's knock a few of these out in the homework. Same letters? Do each of these letters have the same exponent? Yeah. Then they're like terms. So what do I need to do? If I'm putting them together, what does this say? Negative three plus four. You can do that part in your calculator. What is negative three plus four? One. One. Y. What do you have one of? To the third power. You have one y to the third power. You don't have to write that one, right? I can just do y third. You can just do y to the third, right? Yeah. So that he likes to walk around and say hi. What are you going to do? I'm going to do three fourths in parentheses plus one sixth in parentheses. Math enter, enter it yep. to reduce your fraction, and then you'll have that answer. Okay? So I'm just going to, since I don't want to get a common denominator and all that, I can do open three over four, three fourths. I need to add that to one sixth. It's going to give me a weird decimal. Math, enter, enter, gives you 11 twelfths. What do you have 11 twelfths of? A squared. X squared. Number six. We'll just go to number seven. We'll do six and seven. And we'll wrap this up on Thursday when we do 5.5. So it's five four do Sunday or five four is do Sunday yeah. Looking at these number six. Looking at my two terms. They have the same letter. But do these letters have the same exponents? No. They don't. Which means you can't subtract that. So when you type in your answer, the polynomial 
Oh, the polynomial can be simplified. It cannot. The polynomial cannot be simplified. The polynomial written in descending powers. What it means when it says in descending, that just means sometimes you'll have a group of terms and the exponents will be all over the place. If you want to put them in order, you start your group of terms with the highest exponent and go down, which it already is. Right, so x to the third it. should come in before x. This x. So that's exactly you just type that in right there. That's as simplified as I can get. I can't add them together. Um, and I don't. I don't subtract. Why? Why are you going to subtract? This is an x to the third, and that's an x. You can't. So they're not like terms. You can't put them together. That it is the way the problem is given to you is as simplified as it can get. I can't subtract that because I can't do an x to the third. Right with an X. All right, last one, number seven. Two X to the third. Plus nine X to the third. Plus two X to the fifth. Says write the answer with descending powers. Again, all that means is your highest exponent comes first. So looking at these terms, what is this term? It's an x to the third. What is this term? Which means those can go together, but can they go with this one? No. No. But that is your highest exponent. So when I write my answer, it'll come in its first. There's no other x to the fifth to put with this though. So it's just by itself, two x to the fifth. How many x to the thirds do I have all together? Well, nine and two. Which is? And 11. Right, you have 11 x to the thirds. When you took their right term, which means you can put them together. You can't do nothing with that because that's an x to the fifth. That's an x to the third. They're not like terms. Okay, I'm going to share my screen with the uh, video just to show, and I can show y'all individually. On number five, you're going to have to type in an answer that has a fraction part to it and an exponent part to it. So I just want to make sure so you don't get frustrated with math lab what buttons to push to make that happen. Ooh. So I'm just going to go to Number five in So I have two ninths x to the fourth plus four sevenths x to the fourth. So I do want to add the two ninths and the four sevenths together since they have, they're like terms. They're both x to the fourth. So I just need to do two ninths. Plus open parentheses four sevenths. Add that together, then math, enter, enter it. So I need to type in 50 over 63, which is what I got as my answer, x to the fourth. So when I hit 
this, the first thing I want to do is come down here and tell it I'm about to type in a fraction. So come down to this toolbox down here, pick it out your fraction. When I say 50 over 63, so 50, go to the bottom, 63. Now, before you start, because now I need to type in X to the fourth. You don't want to type it in yet because it'll be down there with that 63. Arrow to the right to get out of the bottom of that fraction now. Once you arrow to the right and get out of the bottom of the fraction, then you type in your X. After you type in your X, look down back here at your toolbar. It's kind of a pain to type this in. Back here at your toolbar and see the one that has the little blue box at the top where the exponent goes? Hit that. Type in X to the, what is it? Four. Just got a number five off of it. Okay, we will finish five four and do five five on Thursday. 